My name is Karen Kaplan of the Child Protection, uh, uh, Director of Child Protection Reform at American Humane. I am honored to provide comments on the reauthorization of the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act and thank the chairwoman, ranking member, and subcommittee members for the invitation to do so. American Humane is a national nonpartisan membership organization that was founded 132 years ago to protect the welfare of children and animals. Our testimony reflects over a century of pro progressively advocating at the federal, state, and local levels for laws that protect both children and animals from abuse and neglect. In 1974, Congress passed what was and still remains the preeminent federal legislation addressing child maltreatment. Throughout the United States, a primary responsibility of child protection agencies is to receive and respond to all reports of alleged child abuse and neglect. Historically, there's been one response by the child protection agency to accepted reports, an investigation. Given that the majority of families who come to the agency's attention are at low or moderate risk of maltreatment and are not experiencing immediate safety issues, a trend has emerged since 1993 among child welfare agencies to respond to these families differentially in a way that is much more responsive to the needs they present. Differential response, or I will also refer to it as DR, is based on several foundational tenets. Families are not all the same, and the severity of the family situation is not identical across families who come to the attention of the agency. It's important to be responsive to the specific differences. Another foundational tenet of differential response is based on the fact that the child welfare data nationally collected annually indicate that many families receive no post-investigation services. After being identified and labeled as child abusers, these families, these families refuse services and the case is closed. A significant proportion of these families will return to the agency as there's no intervention to the immediate difficulties they have. Some will eventually be involved in the court and they will be ordered to comply with court decisions. Thus, our historical approach with these families has been to produce incentives to meet an obligation instead of promoting cooperation and motivating families to change, which is the aim of differential response. Differential response emphasizes the value of child and family assessments without a determination that maltreatment has occurred. It allows for access for available resources and services rather than solely investigating the occurrence of maltreatment. Services are provided to families without labeling a perpetrator, a victim, and without listing anyone in the central registry. 38% of victims, or three, over 300,000 children nationwide, received no post-investigative services. This was data from 2007. In states that have mature differential response practices, much like Minnesota, and my colleague Rob Sawyer will speak to this, between 60 and 80% of the families screened in by the county child welfare agencies receive this family assessment response, and that is the name used in Minnesota to refer to their differential response system. Families who come to the attention of the CPS agency because the child has poor hygiene, is an inadequately supervised, harshly disciplined, are examples of families that can receive a non-investigation response. Families who come to the attention of the CPS agency because a child has been sexually abused will receive an investigatory response. The likelihood of any criminal activity requiring involvement of law enforcement is, considered, is not considered appropriate for differential response. And families for which there is substance abuse or domestic violence or family violence of any kind may receive one or the other response, depending on the specific situation and the characteristics of the family. Differential response has been implemented statewide and in selected jurisdiction, jurisdictions in 20 states nationwide. The number continues to grow. Although research is in its infancy, random assignment design studies, a rigor that is not common in the child welfare system, show the following positive results. Child safety is not compromised. In some instances, safety is achieved sooner. Repeat cases of abuse and neglect decrease. There are higher rates of family cooperation and participation. 
there are lower placement rates in foster care. The costs to the system are reduced over time. And there is increased satisfaction both by the workforce and the families that are participating in a differential response system. On behalf of American Humane, I respectfully request that the subcommittee entertain four recommendations. Support the efforts of states, local, and tribal child welfare agencies to provide differential responses to individual families who come to the attention of the Child Protection Agency. Many families, through no fault of their own, lack the personal history, know-how, and resources to protect their children from harm or risk of harm. Differential response systems allow for and promote the use of interventions that do not alienate nor demonize parents, but rather engage parents in addressing the needs so they can successfully and safely parent their child. Support flexibility to front load the system. The current federal child welfare funding streams provide incentives to place children outside their home. The primary way to prevent removal of children from their families of origin is to invest resources, whether they be staff time and intervention, concrete and therapeutic services, and formal and informal supports at the beginning of families' involvement with the child protection system. The identification of service needs in a differential response begins at the first contact with the family without delaying the availability of service provision until an investigation or any other agency procedures are completed. To the extent possible, encourage modifications in the state automated child welfare information system, better known as SACWIS, that allow for capturing the data of those children who are part of a differential response. With the implementation of differential response, the current child welfare data systems require modification in order to collect and produce quality data so that we can understand and assess what is happening with these families. While we understand that appropriated levels of funding do not come out of this committee, it is significant to note that, as I said previously, 300,000 children identified as victims of maltreatment receive no post-investigative services. Therefore, we request your support for the increase of allocations. American Humane hopes this cap to reauthorization serves as a foundation and impetus for the reduction of children who experience abuse and neglect and an increase in the number of families who have sufficient strengths, capacity, and supports to keep children safe from harm. Thank you.